Hey, <laughs> oh goodness, my hair. Uh, looks like I'm in the process of making it look like, what is it, Davy Havoc in that video, Miss Murder. That's not what's happening, <laughs> I promise. Of course, I used to want my hair like that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's not what this video is about. I thought we would talk about another person in history. <laughs> and this particular individual, she was a silent film actress. Actually, she started in stage. Um, this is Peggy Shannon. Her, um, that was her, like, stage name and everything. And she was born Winona Salmon. And it's not like the fish. It's S-A-M-M-O-N. So, um, I hope it's said right. She was born January 10th, 1907. And, uh, not... Nothing is known about her early years and everything. I mean, just, <laughs> you know, that that's the problem, is a lot of these actresses, unless they were big, like Mary Pickford and everything, not a lot is known. Maybe where they were born, and that's about it. So, um, but yeah, January 10th, 1907, she was a Ziegfeld girl in uh, 1923. And then she moved to Broadway in 1927. Uh, one thing to understand is Broadway was a lot different back then. <laughs> of course, she got a lot of the interesting shows, like Dracula was on Broadway back then. Um, I think in my Bella Lugosi video, of course, Bella Lugosi was Dracula then. But what's funny is, of course, I say this in that video, but he was not the first choice. I think it was Lon Chaney Sr. for that. So... Yeah, and, and of course, um, Wizard of Oz was on Broadway. It started on Broadway, if I remember correctly, the timeline goes, it was on Broadway first, and then the silent films started popping up and everything, so, but anyway, so yeah, she, she moved to Broadway. It didn't say what show she was in. A lot of times it does. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what she did. And then a talent scout found her and she was offered a contract by Paramount. Here's the thing. She was uh, said to be the next it girl because uh, by this time, uh, Clara Bow had suffered a nervous breakdown and she was losing the spotlight as the it girl, which is too bad. Yeah, that, this was the point in Clara's career when things were starting to spiral and, and everything, you know, I, and, and this is the thing at some point I will talk about, uh, Rudolph Valentino and, and, uh, Ramon Navarro, but after, um, Rudolph Valentino passed away, of course he was a big heartthrob and everything. Well, they needed a replacement of course. And it, cause that's how Hollywood is even back then. That's how Hollywood worked. And so you had Ramon Navarro. And so he was the next, uh, love interest. And, um, so it was not an uncommon thing. So here we have another example. Uh, Peggy Shannon was the next it girl. Now she, she worked six, which is uncommon back then, actually. Uh, she worked 16 hour days. She, when one shoe wrapped up, she rushed to begin another film. So she was doing like two films in one day. Sometimes I read where she did sometimes even three, she would start a third one. And so, it, I mean, this girl was just nonstop <laughs> and, and her filmography is, yeah. And, um, she has quite a long filmography. <laughs> now, she was known as a uh, fashion plate. I had to look that up, which it means that she wore styles like three or four months before they were popular. And um, so she was ahead of her time in the fashion world. So I'm sure people were like, what is that? And then all of a sudden the trend started. So, and <laughs> Yeah, that, that happened. Of course, these days now, people are more nostalgic than anything else. People are in the 80s stuff, 70s stuff. Of course, the 70s were more when I was in high school in the 90s. Yeah, a, a lot of the 70s. I remember my mom going in the store with me, and she's like, I wore that stuff in, the, in high school 20 years ago. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, nostalgia is hitting more than actually new stuff popping up. So I don't know. Now, in 1932, she signed with Fox, and this is a point where, because if you remember, in um, 1927, 1928, she was the it girl. You know, everything's. And then in 1932, that's where her drinking problem started, and. This is not an uncommon thing. There was uh, Marie Prevost. She was the Max Senate bathing girl. And I think I deleted that video. I'll have to make a new one for her. And, um, but Marie Prevost, when she left Max Senate, um, that's when her drinking problem began. And, um, yeah, so when things with a lot of these young ladies, it, and it's just, it's tragic. So she was rumored to have a drinking problem. Then in 1935, she returned to Broadway. Again, it didn't say what. <laughs> she just, she just returned. She did, it, uh... <laughs> and you would think with 1935, because they had a, a better um, documenting, I don't even know what to call it that they would say what she was in. I'll have to check again and I'll put it in the description. Maybe I just missed it. And cause that's not uncommon <laughs> for me, but she was replaced. And um, she said in, in her words, she said that it was like a tooth infection and she, she couldn't do the, the show. But of course the media being what it is said that it was her supposed drinking problem. And so um, nobody really knew what it was that made her, that why she was replaced. It could be a number of things. It could be a dispute with a manager. It could be this, it could be that, it could be all kinds of things, you know? And um, so the next year in 1936, she returned to Hollywood. She did a film called Youth on Parole. And by this point, her drinking had got so bad, it, it she couldn't hide it anymore. And that's when she wasn't getting as many offers for movies. And of course, depression sets in when you do that. You know, I mean, you were, <laughs> you were the it girl, the new it girl. You replaced a big star like Clara Bow. And so depression sets in, she's drinking more. It, you know, it was just... Her last film appearance was in 1940. She did the film Triple Justice. And um, now she did marry twice. Uh, she married the actor Alan Davis in 1926. They divorced in 1940. And um, then she married cameraman Albert Roberts in 1940. And uh, like right and it didn't really say if there was like some kind of maybe Alan Davis divorced her just because of her drinking and he had had it or if he found out about like um, a, an affair with Albert. But um, it, it could be either one, you know, and so I would go with the, the drinking because it sounded like it was it was pretty bad and um, which is sad. Now, when it, this is, this is heartbreaking. This is absolute, this is just sad. So her husband, Albert Roberts, found her. She had died of a heart attack. She was slumped over in her chair. She, and you know, she was on like at the table. So she was slumped over and I mean, he's just hysterical and obviously he absolutely loved her and just in massive hysterics and nobody could calm him down. And he's just, and, uh, loved ones were saying that, I mean, at the funeral, he's just, <laughs> they, they couldn't calm him down. Three weeks later, after she had passed away, Albert committed suicide in the exact same place. 
he was sitting in the exact same chair. I cried when I read that. I was like, oh my gosh, this poor man. And um, he left a suicide note. It said that he, he couldn't live without her. And it, I mean, I, I read part of the, the note and it was just like, my gosh, he just adored her. So her drinking had just consumed everything. I mean, you think about it, you know, being the, like I said, the, the replacement for, for Clara Bow and everything. And I'm sure that, that Albert tried everything he could and it just wasn't enough. The, the drinking had, had just completely consumed her, but, um, I was just, <laughs> just, and, um, I'm getting weepy eyed, but, um, cause <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, um, that's Peggy Shannon. Um, like I said, she started as a Zegfeld girl. She moved to Broadway. I'll try to find the, cause it could be, I just overlooked it. I'll try to find the shows that she was in and everything. And, um, she, you know, Clara Bow's, um, stardom was starting to fade because she had suffered a nervous breakdown. And so, and, you know, that wasn't uncommon. And like I said, with, when Rudolph Valentino passed away, they needed someone else. And so Ramon Navarro, <laughs> which they, they did good there. Cause Ramon, I, I, <laughs> oh, <laughs> A lot of years too late. <laughs> I think he's a very handsome young man. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm the wrong gender for him. But anyway, yeah, because he was gay. And, um, but still very handsome. <laughs> I can look, but <laughs> anyway, yeah. And I'll have to do vi uh, videos for, for both of them. And, um, for both Ramon and... He's another one that's very tragic. That one makes me angry, what happened to Ramon. But anyway, this is uh, Peggy Shannon. Um, I'll also try and find where she was born and, and put that in the description for you. And yeah, it, I feel so bad for her husband. That, that was just, oh. And, um, but anyway, yeah, so that's Peggy Shannon.